So, what, what equation do we need to use here? What equation should we use? We use the equation uh, of... <coughs> we also need to know the interest rate, right? So the interest rate is 10%. So, we can see here that we have the, this equation. Okay, so we have to get the right equation. So, this is the cash flow in the future, right? 1 plus the interest rate times the N. So that's 500,000 over 1 plus 0 0.1 times 10. And that should be equals to 192,771.64, right? Something like that. Does that make sense? So when we do this question, we have to say, does it make sense? Is that calculation wrong? Is it 192? 192. Somebody gave me a data for it. So does that does that look right? Does that number look right? If I have two hundred thousand today and the interest rate is ten percent, is that five hundred thousand in ten years? Should this number be lower or higher? Lower. Lower. It's lower, right? Should it be much lower? The interest rate is ten percent. A lot lower or a little lower? 10% over 10 years, should it be a lot lower or a little lower? A lot, right? If it was 1%, it's going to be a little lower. So we have to think about our... Uh, so on. Is that... Some people wrote down 192. Yes, that's the correct answer, okay. So the next one is find the annuity. So the annuity is how much are we going to pay every year? So I'm looking at this one, and this one says <coughs> 1,296,000 I have to pay every year. So that can't be right. The number is higher. Okay? So you have to use common sense. If it's an annuity, is it going to be higher or lower than this number? Lower, right? Annuity I pay every year, a set amount. Do you understand annuity? We explained in the last class. Annuity means year one, year two, year three, year four, year five, year six, year seven, year eight, year nine, and year ten. I'm going to pay the same amount of money ten times. Okay? Same amount of money, 10 times. That's an annuity. Okay? So, of course, it's going to be lower than this number. This number is just in years now, I have this number. Okay? And then every year, I don't put in any new number, just I get interest every year. So it grows, and it's compound interest. So it keeps growing until it hits 500,000. Okay? But an annuity is different. How much do I need to save every year? And I'll get some interest every time. So we have an equation, which is, uh, given the future value, find the annuity. So, <coughs> we have... We have here the future value, this is the equation, right? Then we have interest rate over 1 plus the interest rate to the power of n minus 1. Okay? So we know this is the equation, right? Where did we find this equation? This seems to be most people's problem, finding the correct equation. We find this equation because we figure out that we have the future value and we want to find the annuity. Okay? And then we go to the PPT of time value of money, 
and we find the equation which it says annuity given future value. Okay, annuity given future value. This is the equation. Okay, we know the future value, we want to find the annuity. So there's an equation we can use for that. So then after that it's easy. After that we just need to put in the numbers. Again we've got 500,000 here. In the exam, if you get this right, the right equation, right? You make some smallest mistake later in the numbers. I won't deduct too many points. Okay? Important thing is you got the equation right. You know what is happening. So we just five hundred thousand multiplied by zero point one over we already one point one to the power of ten minus one. Okay? So we should end up with this should be five hundred thousand times 0 0.1 over 1.6 okay so in the end we should end up with in this case they say 31,250 so let's check with Yes, in other answers is also the same. Okay, so every year I put aside thirty-one thousand two hundred and fifty dollars. Okay, this year, this year. In the end, this plus the interest, this will get interest of ten percent. Okay, then I add another thirty-one thousand five hundred and get another interest, and so on. In the end, I'm going to have five hundred thousand. So what I want to know, if I'm saving money for my pension or my children's <coughs> education, how much do I need to save every year? How much do I need to save every month? Okay? In this case, I, want, I have 10 years left to work, and I want to have half a million dollars for my pension. It means that every year I have to save $30,000. Okay? Is that easy, saving $30,000 a year? No, I should have a high salary. Okay? So that's why people say it's a good idea to start saving for your pension early when you're in your 20s or 30s. Because of this effect, the number can be much lower. Okay, if I start, if we do this for 30 years, then we just change, we change this to 30, right? So we can get a much lower number. Um, and it's easier to save. Do you have any question about number one? Yes? Um, like, I'm just wondering, that's okay. Yes. Yes, so here you can write 770. I don't mind. That's okay. The answer is correct. How much more? You mean like 80? Maybe. Yeah, maybe it's okay. Is it alright? Yes. All right, so you do some little rounding up, it's okay. That's just not much difference, right? Uh, let's look at the second question. Uh, second question is about the mortgage. Do you understand mortgage? Mortgage is a loan for your house. So we have a 30 year mortgage loan and it's 200,000. Is the 200,000 a present value, an annuity, or a future value? This is a present value. Okay, the house costs 200,000 now, I'm getting the loan for 200,000 now. So what do you think? If I know the present value, what do you think I'm going to have to find if it's a mortgage? Annuity. Annuity. How much I need to pay every year? Or, usually for the mortgage, how much I need to pay every month? Okay? Mortgage is usually done on a monthly basis. So it says here the payments will be made monthly, and we are given an annual interest rate. So there's two ways we can do this. 
We can change the annual rate to a little bit higher, or we can just calculate monthly. So calculating monthly is, is, is probably better. So we want to find the annuity given the present value. So in this case, we know that the equation is present value R over 1 minus 1 over 1 plus R to the power of n. Okay, so again, it's important to get the right equation. What do we know? We know the future value, right? So future value is here, future value is here, and R is in the equation. What do we know here? We know the present value. So we want to find the annuity. We use this equation. Okay? So we have got uh, 200,000 for the present value. The interest rate, if the <coughs> annual interest rate is 8%, what's the monthly interest rate? 0 0.675. So we have 8 over 12 is equals to 0 0.675. Is that correct? Right? That's uh, 2 over 3. So write 0 0.666, so on. So zero. We can say 0 0.67. So <coughs> interest rate is going to be 0 0.00. Zero, zero, six, seven. Okay, that's important. A lot of people make a mistake here. They put 0 0.67. That would be 6.7%. Right? But we're not saying 6.7%. It's 0 0.67%. Okay, 0.67%. If we write that in numbers, that's 0 0.0067. Okay? So we can commonly make a mistake here. <coughs> over 1 minus 1 over 1.0067. Okay? To the power of, what do we write here? 30 years, 12 months, 360. Okay? So we solved it, this uh, one. I can see most people here were using the... Uh, one person here uses 360, but they just use 0 0.6 instead of 0 0.67. Okay, so here we find the correct answer. So it says here that 200,000. They've just done the answer. 1473109. Is that correct? Did we make a mistake here? Sometimes this can be complicated. Okay, we find this again somewhere else. So it means that we need to pay, if we do this calculation, we need to pay this much money every month. Okay? Then we can. Uh, for 30 years. So, for example, in one year, that's about uh, 12 times. This is uh, about 15,000 a year. Okay. So we have to kind, we have to look at that number and see if it makes sense. Okay. So it seems like this number makes sense. Okay. We pay about 1,000. Four hundred a year, right? So, next question. Question three. Do you have any question about this one? I'm looking through. Some people did three hundred and sixty, but some people did uh, thirty. Some people wrote the interest rate wrong. Some people wrote here zero point eight. They used the eight percent, which is a yearly interest rate, even though it was for monthly. Okay, they were the kind of common mistakes. People were using the yearly interest rate, even though it was monthly here. Okay, so we need to change the interest rate to decide: are we going to do yearly or monthly? 
So then, the next question. Yes? Uh, no, because in this case, we are figuring out, if I have this much money now, how much will I have in 10 years, if I get 10% interest every year? We can guess the last money, right? We can. We don't have to guess. We can. We have an equation which tells us the answer. If I have 192,000 now, today, and I can invest, let's say, just for example, the government bond has 10% interest rate. I'm sure I will get 10% every year. So I'm sure the government will pay me back, and I'm sure that I will have 500,000 after 10 years. Okay. Yes. I'm also sure that if I want to have 500,000 after 10 years, and the interest rate is 10%, then I need to invest this much money in the government bond today. Okay? Then I'll have this much after 10 years. The annuity, how much do I need to save every year? Okay? I save this in the first year and then deposit. Save this in the second year, deposit. Okay? The same amount every year. If we save 31,000 every year for 10 years and the interest rate is 10%, we're going to have 500,000 at the end. So we can check our answers by adding them all together and if it's going to give us 500,000. No, because there is compound interest rate. So if I just add up 31,000 10 times, I'm going to have 310,000, right? But that's not accounting for the interest rate, <coughs> which is 10%. If I add on 10% to 31,000, that's going to be 340,000. That's not accounting for compound interest. Compound interest is I got 10% the first year, and 10% the second year, okay? And 10% the third year. So do you understand compound interest? Yeah. yeah. So because of that, it's very hard to add up by yourself. So that's why we have this equation, okay? You don't have to add up by yourself. It takes a long time. It would take you a very long time to do all the compound interest. So instead, we have an equation which we use. It's easier. Okay, so question number three. So it's good that uh, you asked the question because I guess other students have the same question. So. so question three, the company needs to pay back 100 million in bonds in 10 years. The interest rate is 9%. Okay? So every year we need to put aside money for the next 10 years to repay the bond. So we already, we already used this equation, right? What do we know? What's this? Future value or present value? What does 100 million in 10 years? Is that now or in the future? future. It's a future value. Okay? We know the future value. We know the interest rate, we know the time, okay? So, what do we need to find? They're going to ask us to find one of two things. They're either going to ask us the present value or the annuity, okay? In this case, they want, to add, they want us to find the annuity. So we have to go back to the similar equation we used in the first one. <coughs> find the annuity when we're given the future value. So, when we read the question, it could be a little bit complicated, but we have to figure out, just write the question simply, like this, okay? So we can figure out what we need to have. So, let me see, trying to find the correct 
Answer. Okay, so we have uh, the future value oh, multiplied by uh, Over the interest rate, one minus the one over the one plus the interest rate to the power of n. Okay, so we're using this equation again, and we get a hundred uh, multiplied by zero point zero nine over one minus. 1 over 1.09 times 10 equals 100 times 0 0.09 over 1 minus 1 over 1, 2.37 equals uh, 16 million. Professor, is that, is that equation energy for present value? Hmm? Isn't that equation a new tip for present value? Uh, maybe it is. Yeah, sorry, I'm just taking from one of the answers here. So it must be the Thank you for pointing out, it's the other, this one is the present, when we know the present value, so uh, it should be the other one around, right? 1 plus or power of n minus 1. So, <coughs> Those equations, they look quite similar, right? Just the bottom line, the one is on the other side. So try not to confuse them, okay? So th in this case, it's the future value we have on the left-hand side. So we should have uh, 1.09 power of 10. Minus one. So this we said already was two point three seven. So we have two point three seven minus one. And then we should have six point five seven million. Okay? So if we Say, if, if we put aside 6.57 million every year, right, then in the end, we'll have 100 million, okay? What was the first number I wrote down? 16. 16 million. So even if we looked at that, that couldn't be correct, right? Because if we put aside 16 million for 10 years, that would add up to 160 million, okay, which would be more than 100 million, and that's not even accounting for the interest, okay? So we have to look at, even when you finish your calculation, check your calculation, it doesn't make sense. Okay, this one seems to make sense. 10 times 6 is 60. Okay, 60, then we think about the interest and the compound interest, probably it adds up to 100. It seems right, okay? So we have to get the right equation, and then <laughs> put in the figures. But do you have any question about this one? So, <laughs> the next one is question four. So, in question four, we have a bond which is 1,000 in 10 years. And you pay 300 today. 
So, what's this? Future value. Future value. Okay, what's this? Present value. What do we want to find? We want to find R. So we can use any equation which includes future value, present value, and R. Okay, so the simple, we have the simple present value or the simple future value. Either of those equations uh, include R. So we just have to put that into the equation and then solve for R. So So here we have somebody who's written down. Looks like the correct answer. 300 equals 1000 over 1 plus r times 10. Okay? So 300 is present value is equals to future value over 1 plus r to the power of 10. So we, we know this is, we already used this equation in que question 1, okay? Present value is equals to future value over 1 plus r to the power of 10. So in this case, we need to find r, we don't know r. So we just change around the equation. So we end up with uh, 300 multiplied by 1 plus r to the power of 10 equals 1000, okay? Then we have 1 plus r to the power of 10 is equals to, if we take these two sides, it's going to be 1000 over 300, okay? So we're just doing maths now. 1 plus r to the power of 10 is equals to uh, 10 over 3, right? 0 0.33. Okay? So, or sorry, 3.33. 3, 3. Then, 1 plus r is equals to the square root of 3.33. Maybe this was the difficult part, right? We need to change this over to the other side. Okay? So, uh, this 1 plus r is equal to one, 0 0.1279, r is equal to, sorry, is equal to 1.1279, so r is equal to 1.1279, take over the 1, minus 1, okay? R is equals to 0 0.128. So that's 12.8%. So can you see that? It's just maths, right? We put these numbers into the equation. We don't know R, and we just solve for R. Solve for R. Then we can see that. If I'm buying a bond, I want to know how much return I make today. So if I go to the auction and the bond costs 1,000, I should know. If I bid 300, what percent is that? It means I'll get like interest payment of 12.8% every year. Okay? If I bid 500 for the bond, is it going to be more or less than 12.8%? If I pay if I pay five hundred today for the bond, is the interest rate going to be higher or lower? Lower, right? It's going to be lower. We do the equation again. Five hundred is here. It's going to be equals to two instead of three point three. Okay, it'll be a lower interest rate. Do you have any question about this one? So then let's look at the last one. <coughs> Thank <laughs> you.
So I can see that number four was quite difficult for people. There was a lot of mistakes. So in number five, we have two houses. Okay. So we're getting again it's a question about the mortgage. So with the mortgage, we need to find the annuity, right? So again, we want to find the annuity. Usually people pay their mortgage monthly, not yearly. Pay monthly. <coughs> so it's 30 years, we're talking about the time, and is 30. Or the interest rate, 8%. So a mortgage for 30 years at 8%, okay, find the annuity. Okay, so how much mortgages are we, we're talking about two mortgages. So the first one is Chala and the second one is South Orange. Two houses. One is more expensive than the other. But we're going to have the same type of calculation, right? How much is the mortgage for this house? 300,000. We have 100,000 as a down payment. Do you understand down payment? So we're talking about 300,000. Okay? How much is the mortgage for this one? 200,000. The same, right? 300,000 minus 200 equals 100,000. Okay? So we have the down payment. So we already did this calculation in number 2. Okay? Same, the same uh, way as number two. We need to find the annuity given the present value. So we have present value R over 1 minus 1 over 1 plus R times N. Okay? So we use this equation here, and we use this equation here. I'm not going to, just to save time, I'm not going to write all this out. I'm going to write the answer that somebody put here, but it's going to be 300,000, right? Or is 0 0.08, okay? 1 minus, again, we put in here 0 0.08. What's N? Or sorry, we have to do the monthly. So R is not 0 0.08, it's the same. It's divided by 12 equals 0 0.0, or it equals to 0 0.67%. Okay, so R here will be 0 0.067, okay? We did the same in the last question, 0 0.067. So it's we're doing monthly, monthly calculation. So we need to find the monthly interest rate. This is monthly interest rate. Then N, 360. It's 30 years, okay? So actually, we already found this number in the first question, 1.067 by 360. Okay. So, uh, sorry, this is 200,000. In fact, we already had this in question two. It was a 30-year mortgage loan for 200,000. Okay. So we should have the same answer as we had in question two, and this one is just 300,000 instead of 200,000. So we could use the same kind of numbers. So, I can see again I'm finding pe people who are doing the yearly, they're doing yearly, but the mistake they're making, it's okay to do yearly, but if we do yearly, you have to make this into a compound interest rate, because people pay their mortgage monthly. So it's not going to be 8%, if you do the yearly calculation, it's going to be something like 8 point something percent, okay? So, <coughs> if we do the mortgage payment, we pay the mortgage payment monthly. Okay, so if we have, even on your mortgage, the bank tells you the yearly interest rate is 8%, the effective interest rate is more than 8%. Because you're paying monthly, you could have be saving that money in the bank, getting the interest, right? 
You're not paying at the end of the year. You're paying in January, in February, in March. So the rate is actually more than 8%. Okay? So I gave you the equation where you can calculate that. If you want, you can calculate that way. But the way I do it is break it into the monthly interest rate and use N as a monthly. So 360. So let's see if anybody did uh, that way. So we can. <laughs> Looks like everybody was doing this on the year. <coughs> Yearly rate with 30. Oh. And let's do the calculation now. Okay. Uh, we have equals 0 0.0067 over 1 minus 1 over 1.0067. So can somebody tell me what this number is? 1.06067 to the power of 360? 11.1. So 1 minus 1 over 11.1. So what's, what's uh, 1 over 11.1? 0 0.09. So 1 minus 0 0.09. Okay, so it's going to be equals 0 0.91 okay so on the bottom line we're going to have 0 0.91 on the top line 0 0.0067 so what's what's this 0 0.007 Zero, zero. Two zeros. Okay. So we mu we multiply this by three hundred thousand and two hundred thousand, right? So how much is that? And this one? Is the same as we did in the first question, right? One, four, seven, three, something like that. Okay. So we can see that we just did the calculation across, right? The complicated part is this one, the bottom line here. Okay. We have this. We have this. Doesn't change. Just we need to calculate the bottom line. The bottom line. We did the calculation across here. It was equals to 0 0.91, okay? Then divide, we get this number. Now that we know this number, we just multiply by 300,000 for Chatham. So Chatham, this is Chatham's monthly payment. So monthly mortgage payment. And across here we have South Orange monthly mortgage payment. Okay, so if I if I want to get a loan to buy a house, and I want to know I have to pay back over how many years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, and I know the interest rate, then I can calculate my monthly repayment. Okay, that's how much I need to pay every month. So here I need to pay this much, here I need to pay this much. So we have to add this to the property taxes. So, how much is the property taxes? Uh, annual property tax. This is annual, so we need to change the property taxes to monthly. Monthly. So the annual property taxes are six thousand and twelve thousand, right? Six thousand for Chatham and twelve thousand. So it's easy to find the monthly payment. 
right, 500 a month. And let's say this is uh, 1,000. So we are going to add 500 here. We don't have to use compound interest because the annual tax is paid once a year at the end of the year, not monthly. Okay? So 500 and plus 500 and plus 1,000. So this is 2,720 and this one is 2,480. Okay, so this one is cheaper. Okay. Property tax is more expensive, but the monthly payment is cheaper. Okay. This works out at this much monthly, this one works out as this much monthly. I could also, another way, I could have multiplied this to make an annual payment and then compare it to the annual tax. So I guess most people made the mistake here that they did this yearly, they calculated yearly, they put 30 here and 8 here. That's okay, your interest will be close, but you're not accounting for the compound interest that I pay my mortgage monthly, okay, not yearly. If I paid my mortgage at the end of every year, that would be correct, okay, but usually we pay the mortgage at the end of every month. So perhaps the question could have been clearer, right, the question could have been clearer that the mortgage was monthly payment, not yearly payment, okay. So... Anyway, if you did the year, if you did this correctly for the yearly payment, not so bad because it, it says mortgage here, but it didn't say clearly the mortgage is paid monthly. Okay, just we understand usually that mortgage is paid monthly. Okay, so do you have any questions about any of the any of the calculations? Do you think you can do these calculations now? If you get this calculation in the exam, will you be able to do the calculation? Hmm? No? Which, which calculation will you not be able to do? Which is the most difficult one? Four? So, just generally, what you have to do is you have to see what you're given. Write down what you're given. Okay? So here we have for example, in this question, we have present value. Write down what you have. Present value, 300,000, okay? Interest rate, annual. Annual rate, 8%, okay? Monthly rate, 0.67%, okay? What other information do we know? You know the time. Time is equal to 30. So when you do the question, first of all, write down what you know. Okay? Write down what you know. I know the present value. I know the monthly interest rate. Okay? I know the time, yearly and monthly. Okay? So here I know that I'm dealing with the mortgage, so I have to use the monthly value. Okay? I need to use the monthly value. Okay, so I have this written down at the start, it helps, it's clearer, okay? Then I just have to go find the equation that I need. The equation is, I want to find the annuity. If I know these things, there's only two things I can find. One is future value, the other is annuity, okay? So normally these questions is, you're going to be asked, find the present value, find the future value, find the annuity, okay? So, I know this, I know this, and the question is asking me to find an annuity, okay? <coughs> so, <coughs> in fact, in this question, I could also have found a future value, because it says, compare, we are comparing the two houses. So, I could also have solved this question for future value and seen which was cheaper, okay? But I decided to solve for annuity, to compare the two houses. So then you just get your equation. So you don't have to learn off the equation. You should be able to look at the PPT or else just make a list for yourself of the equations. Okay, I want to find the annuity. I know the present value. Equation, write down the equation, okay? I want to find the future value. I know the annuity. Write down the equation. Okay? 
right? And then <coughs> put in the numbers, put the numbers into the equation. So in that way, we should be able to answer the questions. So the best way to do this is practice. So I'll just I'll put up some more uh, questions, not obligatory, just in case somebody wants to practice. Okay, I'll put up some more questions that you can practice with. So practice makes perfect in this case. Okay, you need to you have the list of equations. Okay, you just need to practice using them. Like anything, if you practice it, it gets easier. Then in the exam, you can uh, you have the list of the equation. So just choose the right equation. In this case, the right equation was annuity given present value. We know the present value. We want to find the annuity. So we we go to our PPT, we find this equation, and then we solve it. <coughs> Any more questions? So let's take a break now for 10 minutes.